This is Hannibal from the HannibalTV.com with a All Elite Wrestling news update for you with some snippets of news courtesy of the Wrestling Observer newsletter, which is reporting the Young Bucks did an interview recently where they said that themselves, as well as Kenny Omega, believed that all three were going to go to WWE for a period of time in 2018. However, Tony Khan changed their minds with a good financial offer, as well as executive jobs, which is something the WWE couldn't offer. Now, WWE former head of talent relations and current AEW commentator and senior advisor Jim Ross has publicly stated that it's in the history of wrestling, it's never been a good idea to give active wrestlers executive jobs with companies as there's a conflict of interest there so we'll see how that plays out for tony khan the bucks also said that wrestler pack is about 99 percent sure he's coming in it's just a question of when doesn't surprise me they're going after him they really like small wrestlers in aew and he's another very small wrestler although he does have a good physique he does have some name value but overall It's a lot of little guys in that company. Tony Khan's AEW will be recording television this fall in 5,000 to 12,000 seat arenas, according to the Young Bucks, which is going to be quite something taping weekly when their last two pay-per-view shows Fighter Fest drew under 5,000 fight for the fallen in AEW's hometown. Basically, Jacksonville, Florida drew about 5,000. So it'll be interesting to see how full they can make those arenas considering the WWE has been around for a long time and SmackDown often draws only three to 5,000 people for a TV taping and WWE is a much larger company. Also regarding AEW, they released a Being the Elite episode this week where the Young Bucks were in the Jacksonville Jaguars football stadium and talked about running a show there someday. Apparently, their last show in Jacksonville last weekend, which was the home market, was about 300 people shy of selling out, and that was only about a 5,000-seat venue, so they're a ways off from filling football stadiums. Now, this is something that I actually watched after reading this report. Also in this episode, they showed uh, Peter Avalon in a library doing curls with books. They then showed the librarians doing a promo with the Young Bucks filming where the Young Bucks were talking about how big the librarians were on Google Trends and walked away saying how their storylines were so much bigger than the WWF. According to Dave Meltzer, basically it was a tongue-in-cheek acknowledgement that the gimmick wasn't working while playing the role of incompetent management that thought the act was getting over big. Well, let me just say something. I watched that, and it's funny that a bunch of the nerds online did did not like Uh, the whole librarian gimmick, but I watched the pre-show to Fighter Fest, and the only match I found somewhat interesting was the librarian's match. And it's funny, they're doing these behind-the-scene type uh, deals where they're trying to show that uh, the executives, the Young Bucks, are really involved in the creative and stuff doing these joking uh, scenarios with the librarians that reminds me a lot about wcw in their later years when vince russo and ed ferrara were trying to do these type of gimmicks uh showing themselves as the powers that be and it failed big time that was just before wcw closed so i'm not a fan of that stuff 
they reveal a lot in AEW uh, behind the curtain stuff like Tony Khan publicly saying that the chair shot for Cody Rhodes was a gimmicked chair where actually the steel seat of it was uh, kind of sawed down according to the Wrestling Observer. So it was basically almost thin like aluminum. So it would just make a large uh, sound and not actually be much danger. It was an accident that the top part of the chair cut Cody Rhodes' head. But Tony Khan stated that publicly. And then this week, they put out a video basically basing an upcoming match between Cody Rhodes and Sean Spears regarding the whole chair incident, which they've already publicly stated was a gimmick. So are we just supposed to ignore whenever they speak publicly about behind the curtain stuff and then go back to suspending our disbelief when they post videos about their angles? I don't know. I really hope that AEW gets off the ground. Um, It's very, very well funded. It's owned by a billionaire, according to reports. So they got money to spend on it. So it'll be interesting to see if they can fill up those five to 12,000 seat arenas on a weekly basis. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.